Welcome to Discovering Resources in the PSC Archives. This webinar is the first of three episodes produced for DW Rental Library's second annual eDiscovery Week. The purpose of this event is to increase the discovery and use of library e-resources and to enhance the access to Philander Smith College's historical digital collections. I'm Letitia Stacey, the Digital Librarian and Archivist here in Philander Smith College's Archives and Special Collections Unit. So in today's session, I'll give you an update about the PSC Digital Archive Project. This digitization project was launched in March of 2016, and since that time, the library student assistants and I have created hundreds of digital surrogates of archival materials and made them accessible to researchers through the PSC Digital Archives website. So I'm happy to report how this digital collection is being used by the PSC community and researchers across the country. I'll also tell you about the differences between library and archival collections, and we'll use a recent archives request as an exercise to learn about how you can use the PSC Digital Archives to discover primary source materials by using several different search methods. We'll go over browsing and keyword searching, an exact match search, Boolean search, and advanced search. And finally, we'll discuss how you can use some of the book, manuscript, and periodical collections in the archives to find information related to the history of the college, alumni, and faculty. As I just mentioned a moment ago, the student assistants and I started digitizing items from the archival collections in the spring semester of 2016. And as of October 27th, 2017, I've been able to publish over 820 items on the Digital Archive website. And so the site includes five exhibits and seven digital collections. So you can view images, historical documents, student newspapers, newsletters, yearbooks, and 48 finding aids that describe, describe the content of the library's archival holdings. Now, from March 2016 to 2017, the PSC Digital Archive has had over 29,000 page views, and 2,788 users have discovered information on the website in over 4,000 sessions. Now, this data is coming from a Google Analytics report that has been generated about a week ago, but if you'd like a copy of the full report, just let me know. I'll share my contact information with you at the end of this overview. So most of the content on the PSC Digital Archives website was created by our library student assistants. So I just want to say thank you to our library intern and five student assistants who have worked long hours in the archive digitizing items for our online collections. And since last March, the student assistants have created digital surrogates of materials from a number of different collections, which include the PSC Photographs Collection, publications like the Philanderian and the College Catalogs, and also some programs from the PSC Chapel and Special Events Programs. So in case you were wondering how all this gets accomplished, Here's a picture of the student workstation that I set up in the archives workroom. The student assistants use a laptop computer connected to a flatbed scanner to digitize photographs and documents from our collection. They also use a number of different applications like Epson Scan for creating high resolution master image files. They use Microsoft Paint to reduce the master file images and create low resolution access files that we use for the website. And an application called Abby Fine Reader is used to convert multi-page scan documents into searchable PDFs. A couple of our students have also used an open source transcoder tool called Handbrake to convert our DVDs to digital file formats. And we also use Google Forms to capture descriptive metadata for the digital objects that are created. We use the Dublin Core Metadata Standard, and that's the standard for Omeka.net. So the student's assistant scan photographs or documents and convert those files to digital formats. And then they fill out um, a metadata worksheet for the item that they just created and submit that to me. And later on, I go and I upload that information and the, and the digital objects that they create into Omeka.net. Now 
Now before we move on to our research request exercise, let's take a moment to review some of the differences between library and archival collections, just so you'll understand why you have to look these types of materials up a little different ways. So to find items in the library collection, your best bet is to go to the library catalog, or what we librarians call the OPEC, which stands for Online Public Access Catalog. And you can also go to the EBSCO Discovery System and enter a keyword phrase into the Panther search field to find items for your research. But to find information from the PSE archives, you're going to need to either browse through the collection finding aids, which you can find in the archives on the second floor of the library, or you can go to the PSE Digital Archive website to find digitized items. So the reason for this difference is a matter of levels of description. Libraries generally process individual items and create individual bibliographic records for each item that's searchable through the OPAC. But archives, on the other hand, describe items on the collection level, which means that when an individual donates a collection of historical value to the institution, me as the archivist, this, I'll describe the collection as a whole, and the like items in the collection are described in relation to one another. So I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the advanced search options. The types of materials in libraries also differ from those um, in the archives as well. In the library collection, you'll find published print and electronic journals. You'll find periodicals and audiovisual materials and items that are available for checkout with the, exce with the exception of reference materials and some special collections. But in the archives, you're going to find pretty much unique materials that are all related to the history of Philander Smith College. We do have some exceptions to that in our special collections. But none of the, collect the items in our collections are going to be circulating because they're rare or one of a kind. So you may want to come in the, arch in, the, in the archive and view the items in the collection. You can make photocopies of the documents, but these items are never meant to actually leave the institutional collection because they're meant to be stored there indefinitely. There are also differences in accessing archival collections that differ from libraries. Patrons can easily just walk into the library, browse through the shelves, take down a book or magazine or journal or newspaper and read them. Um, but because of the fragile nature and the rarity of historical collections, um, you're going to have to ask the archivist to retrieve the materials for you from the long-term storage area. And you're only going to be able to view those documents and, and items in the archives reading room. So while researchers can use any of the library materials for educational purposes or fair use as defined by U.S. copyright law, some archival materials are actually restricted to certain users. And in order to use some of the items in the collection that are unpublished, I do ask that the researchers sign a permission to publish print or exhibit application in order to use those materials from the collection. So the archive, archival collections must be held with a different level of security in mind to protect the intellectual property rights of the creators of the materials and to make sure that these collections are kept intact to maintain the historical record of the institution. And I receive archival requests from a number of different ways. I can get them through email, phone calls, on-site visits, and I get a number of requests that originate outside of Philander Smith College. So the PSA archives has fulfilled research requests from scholars from various universities, public schools, as well as individual requests from freelance writer, writers, journalists, genealogists from all across the country. So let's just take a look at one of these research requests and kind of work through how to use the PSC Digital Archive website to find information that you may need. So here's a recent research request that I received via email, and it reads, Dear Philander Library staff, I'm a senior history major and I'm working on a project about refugee scholars at historically black colleges. I spent some time at Howard University and found remarkably few files on Jewish refugees who taught at black colleges. I'm wondering if your archives may have any information on this. In particular, I'd be looking for information on Simon Green or George and Wilma Iggers, but I'm open to any other leads you may have. 
Now when a receiver requests like this, before I can figure out if there's anything available in our archival collections, I have to identify three major things. I have to identify the subject. So in, in this request, they've actually just named three individuals, Simon Green, George, and Wilma Eggers. We know there are Jewish refugee scholars and they also taught at historically black colleges. I also have to take a look at what kind of materials they're actually requesting. So this person just wants to know all about these particular individuals. So we know that they're requesting some biographical information in no specific file format. So they're just looking for anything, any types of information that we may have in our records. It's also important to establish a time frame for the events that occurred. Now, I just happen to know that George and Wilma Eggers were professors at PSC in the 1950s, but we can also kind of come to the conclusion that they were probably here around the first half of the 20th century because she refers to them as, as Jewish refugees, most likely those Jewish refugees that fled Nazi Germany around World War II. And so that's why we can, that's how we can try to get a date range to work with to kind of start our search out. But if the researcher didn't give me enough information to start searching the collections, then I'd have to ask for more information to try to pinpoint exact subjects and an exact time period to try to look in. So now we can go to the PSC Digital Archives website to find out if we have any materials that have been digitized about this scholar. And we can also use them to browse through the finding aids to see if we have any collections that include information about Simon Green George Iggers or Wilma Iggers. There are a number of different ways to search for information on Omeka.net. The researcher from our sample request could just browse through the collection finding aids to see if the archives has any personal papers or collections from the former faculty members that were mentioned in the email. So the first step would be to go to pscdigitalarchive.omeka.net and on the main menu of the website, scroll over here to the Finding Aids link. When you click on that link, you'll see a description of what a uh, Finding Aid actually is. It's a research guide to an archival or manuscript collection that's used to assist researchers in locating particular items that may be beneficial for whatever they're looking for. If you scroll down here to the bottom of the page, you'll see this link over here to the right that says View Items in Finding Aids. And these are just the finding aids for the physical collections in the archives. So once the person goes through this list of items, just kind of briefly goes over the description of the collection, uh, we could just see if they scroll down here, we actually do have a collection for George Eggers. We have George Eggers papers. And if you click on that link, it will give you the full description of the collection. And what this person could do was just go down here to the list they have um, the actual contents of the collection down here. They could go through and look through the items in this collection, see if there's anything that may be of interest to them. And then they can either come up physically up there to the archives. I can pull this collection for them. They can go through and see if there's something that they, they might want to be interested in. Or um, they could contact me and I could send them some of the photocopies of some of the information in, in this collection. So that's one way that a person can look for um, information here on the archives about what kind of collections we would have available. They could also browse items in the collections that have already been digitized, but there are over 800 digital items here on the website, so it's probably a better idea to use a keyword search to kind of um, limit our search to find more things that are more specific to Simon Green, Wilma Eggers, George Eggers, or just use the phrase for Jewish refugees. A keyword search in Omeka works pretty much like a Google search. So the results will be sorted by relevance, and the results list will also include records that include the individual keywords in the search stream. So let's just see what happens when we search for one of the individuals from our research request. So we can go up here to the search box and type in Simon Green. And then you just click over here on the search icon to execute your query. And as you can see, we've got 226 items total to look for. But I think we can refine this search a little more by using some of our Boolean operators. In 
order to whittle down these search results, let's try to refine our search by using a Boolean operator. Now the default search type on the system is keyword, but to change this option, you just want to go up to the search box and click on the ellipsis. Now in some browsers, this may look like a hyphen or an underscore, but either way, you want to change the query type from keyword to Boolean, just like that. Now, in a Boolean search, it means that you're going to add a special character to the beginning or the end of a word. And in Omega.net, the four characters are the plus sign, the hyphen, the asterisk, or double quotes. And you can use these in the beginning or the end of a word or phrase to kind of narrow your search results. Now, since we're looking for specific names of individuals, let's try to enclose our, our name in quotation marks. And so that way we'll have a kind of an exact search for all records in the system. So I'm just going to put quotes at the beginning and the end here. We got that changed to Boolean. And then you can just click on your, your search icon there or just hit enter on the keyboard and see what happens. So you see our keyword search from Simon Green yielded over 200 items, but we limited our search to this exact phrase, only two items remain. So let's open up these docs to see if we can find any information about Simon Green. In order to search the full text of PDF files, you can scroll down in the record of the file and just read the full text directly. So you can just scroll down here. As you can see, it's kind of unformatted, so that's one way that you can look at the full text, but another way is just to click on the item that you see, and it should open up in your browser. If you don't have a plugin for your browser to open up PDFs, then this will just go to the download portion. And once the file fully uploads into your browser, then you can use Control F on your keyboard. Just hit the Control key and the letter F. And that'll bring up your Find on Page option. So since we're looking for information about Simon Green, I'm just going to put in Simon Green in the Find field and see what happens. And as you can see, there's only one hit for Simon Green, and we see he's the, the physics and mathematics professor at Willamette Smith College. Again, this is a 1954 yearbook. So it looks like that's the only hit we have of him in this file. But you can go on and you can, for George and Wilma Ickers, you can repeat these steps of starting off with a broad keyword search, then using a Boolean operator to narrow your search, and then opening the files and using Control F to search through the full text to find specific information about these individuals. But there's also another option for searching on Omeka.net, and you can use an advanced search option to find more information um, in specific collections or even in specific fields in the item records. To get to the advanced search option, just click on the ellipsis icon here to the right by the search box and then just click on the link at the bottom that says advanced search remember these are just searching through the item records only so this is not going to search the full text which are a part of the files so you just click on that link that says advanced search items only and so the researcher in our request also noted that if we didn't have any information on the individual scholars Simon Green George or Wilma Eggers then they would also be interested in any other information about Jewish refugee scholars who taught at HBCUs. So let's see if there's any information in our other collections that has info on refugee scholars. So what we can do is on the advanced search screen, we can go down here to narrow some of our search fields. So let's go to the drop down menu and we're going to limit our search to a subject and we want this subject to contain the phrase Jewish refugees. And we also want to limit this to a particular collection. I'm just going to search through the Finding AIDS collection because I want to see if we have any other collections in our archival holdings that have anything else to do with this. So once you decide on which fields you want to enter, just put those in there. 
and here at the bottom of the screen just scroll down and click on the, the button that says search for items and as you can see the only collection that we have that features information about Jewish refugee scholars is the George G. Eggers papers and if you remember before this is the same record that we came across when we were just browsing through the finding aids at the beginning of our search but this just goes to show you that there are a number of different ways that you can discover resources that are held in the PSC archives and they're actually online digitized and ready to be searched So if you still don't find what you need on the PSC Digital Archive, you may want to browse some of our book, manuscript, and historical periodical collections. We do have rare books in the archive. Some of these titles date back to the late 1880s. They include biographies of early African Americans and account of missionaries to Africa. Some of the items in this collection are very fragile, so if you want to view them, just give me a heads up and I'll prepare uh, book support so you can browse through these titles without any further damage to the text. If you click on that hyperlink on this screen there, you can go directly to the list of rare books in the library catalog to see what we have available. We also have a manuscripts collection. Again, these are also quite fragile, but some of the texts have some really great information in them, particularly the role of students of Walden Seminary from 1881 to 82. And it also includes some um, very insightful faculty meeting notes from the 1880s. Um, there's one section that's from 1889 to 1879. Box two of this collection also contains meeting minutes from the Promethean and fellow Manthean literary societies that were active on the college campus from the late 1880s to 1890s. So the link on the screen here just leads you to the finding aids for the, link for the manuscripts collection. We also have scrapbooks and photo albums. Some of the scrapbooks, again, are very fragile, but they have great information about campus life in the early 1930s to about the 1990s. And these scrapbooks also include photographs, news clippings from PSC newspapers, as well as local and regional news outlets. Now the PSC publications collection is definitely the one that is used the most here in the archives. So this collection includes the catalogs, college newspapers, and newsletters, commencement programs, and the yearbooks. And, and the yearbooks are definitely one of the most requested items in the collection. So if you go to the link on this page, you can browse through the collections. And the, and the issues that we are digitized are the ones that we actually have here in the collection. So if you look in the newspaper collection, the student newspaper collections, and you see some issues missing, um, we really would like to have the full run of the student newspapers, the Panther Journal and the Philanderian. So if you're an alumni, if you're a staff member or faculty member and you just happen to have some old student newspapers in your garage or attic, please consider donating them to the archives. We have most of the yearbooks and college catalogs, but we really would like the full run of the Panther Journal and the Panther Knot. So if you have these issues, just give me a call. And in addition to the PSC publications, the college librarians have also been collecting news clippings and articles that relate to the history of the college, its alumni, faculty, and staff. And we've accumulated all these items in the newspaper collections. And this collection also includes some rare publications from early African-American newspapers, um, like the Southern Mediator Journal and some other um, African-American papers from the early half of the 20th century. And again, you can always browse through the finding aids on the PSC Digital Archives or physically in the archives to get a sense of the kind of collections that we have available for research. It makes things easier if you have an idea of what collections you want to see before you stop by the archives. So if you contact me ahead of time, I can pull items that you're interested in and make suggestions about some other resources that may be helpful in your research. Be sure to check out the resources page on the Digital Archive to find links to other local and regional cultural heritage institutions. Our collection is dedicated to the history of Philander Smith College with a few special collections. So there are times when I have to refer research to other historical centers that are more in line with what they're looking for. 
And if you've never done research in an archive, read Laura Schmidt's Guide to Effective Research. This is one of the docs that I ask my student assistants to review before they start working in the archival collections. And it really has some good information to people who are just beginning using these primary source materials. So thank you for watching. I hope you've learned how to discover resources in the PSC archives and feel free to contact me Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5. And I hope you'll join me on Wednesday, November 8th at 10 a.m. for the next webinar in this series for eDiscovery Week. This one is called Discovering Historical Resources Online. And in this session, I'll show you how PSC students, faculty, and staff can access Ancestry Library and search for historical information on a number of other digital collection websites. So thanks again.